on this episode of the Oklahoma Breakdown with Hiker and Layman, presented by Riverwind Casino. We give you the things we are watching for in OU spring game. We look at some of the other big spring games around the country that are happening this weekend, and we give you our winners and losers of the week. Please download and subscribe to the podcast. Rate it five stars and write us a good review. Follow the show on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Just search Oklahoma Breakdown on any of those, and you'll find us. All right. Our man, Michael Hosty will kick this thing off. It's time for the Oklahoma Breakdown. It's a beautiful Wednesday, April 19th. And you're listening to the Oklahoma Breakdown with Iker and Lehman, presented by Riverwind Casino. Riverwind is Oklahoma City's premier casino experience. And there are so many reasons why Riverwind is consistently voted OKC's number one casino. But it all starts with their amazing variety of gaming thrills and excitement. Riverwind's beautiful award-winning environment plays host to more than 2,800 of the latest electronic games with a huge selection of table games, including Blackjack, Blackjack Match Roulette, and Teddy's favorite, Craps. No matter what your game, Riverwind has it in spades and hearts. And to learn more about their gaming promotions and entertainment options in the month of April, all you got to do is visit riverwind.com. Riverwind Casino, simply the best. Now we're recording this on Wednesday morning. Please leave us a five-star review and a nice comment. Ted Lehman, how are we doing? Busy, busy weekend coming up, my friend. Busy, busy, busy. A uh, lot of stuff happening. We got uh, a lot of events going on around the spring game. Obviously, the spring game itself. We got alumni in town. We've got Heisman unveilings, Heisman statue unveilings. There's a lot of stuff happening. Yeah, we've got a... We've, we've got a full schedule, man. I mean, we're talking, we've got a Riverwind thing on Thursday night that a bunch of guys are going to. We've got Kyler's thing on Friday night. We've got the brunch on Saturday, the game on Saturday. And I'm not sure how much of it I'm going to make it to. <laughs> things. Uh, yeah, you've got things going as well, huh? Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people out there, a lot of people that, listen to this podcast are our parents you know they've got children wife currently we we're supposed to the induction supposed to happen on monday already three centimeters dilated things things seem to be moving quickly i hope you are ready to call the game from the field sir and then <laughs> also get interviews uh yeah I, hey i'm ready to roll with the punches so are you, you you telling me there could be a birthday shout out on monday's podcast it could be a welcome to the world <laughs> we uh we will see how all of that goes but yeah so it's you know we'll we'll see how it goes but it is looking like things are progressing maybe a little quicker than anticipated and i could be i could be out for the old spring game we'll see we'll see We'll see how we'll it miss you, but we'll make it work. You'll make it. I know you'll make it work. You'll be great. You're always great. Now it is April 19th before we, you know, dive into some of the things we're looking at in OU spring game. Tough day for a lot of Oklahomans, right? Uh, when, when you think about the Oklahoma city bombing back in 1995, clearly all Oklahomans were affected by that. Uh, and, you know, just the impact it had on Oklahoma City, on the state as a whole. But, you know, some people more more directly impacted than others, people that lost family and lost friends. And, you know, kind of whenever we do the podcast uh, on this day, it's just a, it's a good reminder that ho hopefully those people find peace uh, on today, you know, kind of remembering that tragedy. It's always always a tough day in the state. It is. And it's been a long time. Right, and it's still uh, every time this day rolls around around here, it's it's and around the country, not just here, but it's a uh, it's wild to think back um, to think of how uh, how impactful that tragedy was. And gosh, if you're ever downtown, you still see it. You know, I see it almost every day whenever I'm downtown and and think about it. So yeah, it's it's still right there in the forefront. No doubt about it. All right, now. No easy transition uh, from that, but uh, we do have one programming note. Matt Miller from ESPN is going to join us uh, on our next episode to talk NFL draft. We'll go through some of the OU guys, you know, talk QBs, that whole thing. So that that's going to be a lot of fun. But spring game, man, 
what are we watching for? Right. And I'll, I'll kick this thing off. Attendance. Ohio State set the bar, right? 75,000 plus there at Ohio State spring game. We can't let Ohio State beat us, guys. We we just can't do it. Especially you've got you've got Kyler Murray getting his Heisman statue. We just we just cannot let Ohio State have more people at their spring game. And I know their stadium's bigger. I get it. I don't care. And Nebraska's probably going to have that thing sold out, right? With the excitement yeah. around Matt Rule. But let let's ignore Nebraska. They don't count. I'm worried about us beating Ohio State. That that's where I'm at, right? If we want to if we want to be on the same level as the Ohio States, the Bamas, the Georgias, we we got to beat them in spring game attendance. And some people say it doesn't matter. I'm not one of those people. I think it does matter. I think it matters to the players. I think it matters to the coaches, and I sure as hell know it matters to recruits that are going to be there. Absolutely. So I attendance is I mean, that's, that's one thing I'm, I'm keeping an eye on. It was amazing last year needs to stay that way, man. Yeah. Whether or not I, I agree with all of those things, but I guess who knows if it really matters. All I know is this, it's become a measuring stick across the country. I, I I don't know that uh, a handful of years ago, it was as big of a deal, but now all of a sudden you're seeing these lists of who so far has had how many people at their spring game, right? So it's a measuring stick to some degree, right? And recruits that are at these different spring games and they see 50, 60, 75,000 people at a spring game, it's a, it's a pretty good indication of what that fan base is going to be like. And here's the thing. It looked early on like the weather was going to be horrible, 65 and sunny right now with low wind. Let's like, go. You ask for anything better. So right now everything's looking up. Things are looking great. There's going to be plenty to experience there. There's going to be uh, tons of former players in town, big name former players in town. There's going to be events everywhere. Weather's going to be great. Let's see how many we can get out. Yeah, no excuses. Sooner no Nation. excuses. You got to got to show up, support the squad, and and show recruits what – what the OU fan base is all about. All right. Do you think we're going to be able to, if I'm on the radio broadcast, if this, if this second son of mine cooperates, do you think I will be able to keep track of the scoring? Are you, are we even going to try? Did you see that thing they put out? I did. I will not try to keep track. Okay, good. Cause that I, I was told there would be no math. When I said yes to being on the radio broadcast, <laughs> I I just and listen, the offensive scoring makes sense. Touchdown, six, field goal, three, but then a punt is worth two points. What? A a defensive touchdown is worth twelve? How how am I supposed to how am I supposed to keep track of this stuff? It's ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how they came up with it. Uh, the punt one is interesting. A punt is worth two for the offense, but it's worth five for the defense. Now, the only thing I could think of is we got incomplete information. I was thinking maybe a a punt that you're down inside the 10 or inside the 20, you get two points for that maybe. If you're the offense, outside of that, I don't know. I don't know why that's on there. But I... here's the thing. It doesn't matter. No one remembers the score to any spring game ever. Uh, as soon as you walk out of the stadium, or probably even before you walk out of the stadium, you're not going to know, not going to remember, not going to care. It's just a way for the players to keep track whenever you go offense versus defense. It seems awfully stacked for the defense to score a lot more points. <laughs> a pass breakup is worth two points. Yeah. I and a sack. It's. You know, you get a three sack points is worth whereas, three points whenever you have a quarterback that's going to be wearing a blue jersey, I'm guessing. So I. I am fine. Hey, Brent Venables is a defensive guy, right? If he wants to make the scoring system a little defensive friendly, I get that. The defense was not good a year ago. Maybe he's their line of thinking is, hey, let's. Let's make it look from a scoreboard perspective like the defense is playing really well. We'll give them a lot of opportunities to rack up points. 
but it feels awfully one-sided when I look at maybe it's my offensive bias kicking in, but it seems awfully one-sided. Like points for a pass breakup, two points. Come on. I mean, come on. Maybe a point, but two, no. No, 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 no. You're, I think you're right on that. Here's the real interesting thing. We may show up to the game and the offense or the de- defense may already have a big lead because it said in there that they can earn points throughout the week somehow. Yeah, I saw Chavis and Tyler Guyton like racing after practice. Ah, okay. I, who knows? But. I, I do like that it's offense versus defense. And ju- just from a football spec uh, perspective, let's kind of shift into what we're looking at actually on the field. I like that it's offense versus defense because that means I'm going to get like the first team O line together. Yeah. And it, and that means for me, like the first, the first offense together, like we're going to see Dylan Gabriel with the guys that, he's going to be working with for the vast majority in the fall. Right. And, and, and I like that. I, I was, I've never been a fan of like the, the mixing and matching, like the drafting, like I, I want that first unit to be out there together and getting reps. And I, I think that's what the fans want. I, I don't want the patchwork. I want, I want that first group to be together offensively and defensively. So I, I like that. We're going to get ones on ones. I'm a big fan of that. Yeah it's the best way to do it and at the end of the day like i said earlier like don't worry about the score like it seemed to be a pretty hot topic yesterday whenever the scoring came out about how dumb it is and why don't they just play football they will just play football that is what they're going to be doing scoreboard totally irrelevant i'm sure they've got some type of offense versus defense bet on the line or conditioning something it will have to do with the score, but yeah, uh, that's that's really all it is. Don't get caught up in it. Watch these players. Watch the offense. Watch the defense. Watch some of your one-on-one battles out there. That's that's what's really going to be going on. Yeah, let's talk about that. What what are you looking for from a on the field perspective? Players. What what do you got your eye on? Well, I, <laughs> shocker for me, I think the biggest thing I've got my eye on is the Mike linebacker competition between uh, Jaron Kanick and Kobe McKenzie. I think it's critical. Um, you know, there's there's some other position battles that are going on defensively, but to me, that one's the most important. Um, there's There's so much to be, it's not so much gained, but that position is important because whoever earns that spot, I'm more worried about the mistakes than I am the plays that they make. You know, I think it's going to be a little bit of a learning process this season with whoever ends up earning the spot. Maybe they both play throughout the season. And I know they're both capable of, you know, really good things. We all know Cannon can run sideline to sideline. I've talked about how how big of a thumper Kobe McKenzie is in the box. Both those guys have their positives. I'm more worried about who's less likely to make the big critical mistake because they're going to make mistakes. And that's really what I'm going to be watching out there is, yeah, steps may be bad, uh, you know, may get beat on a block, may miss a tackle or two, but are we having big mental breakdowns that lead to explosive plays? Yeah. I think the, the communication piece of it, right. Is going to be interesting. You got to assume that, Levy is he's going to crank up that pace, right? Oh, yeah. If this is a game, then hey, there that offense is going to be trying to go fast. That's what they want to do. So the communication at that Mike Backer spot is so important to getting the defense set, you know, distributing the call across the defense. How do those guys handle that when there's some noise in the crowd? There's thousands and thousands of people like yeah, the heart rate's up, like all that. So I am, yep. I'm with you. I'm I'm gonna have a close eye on that as well. I I did not expect my list to start with a defensive position battle. <laughs> but with with the news that Jaden Davis is hitting the portal, that that battle at the at one of the corner spots becomes very interesting to me because I think you and I both agree Woody Washington is gonna be one of the corners. 
right? He, he's he's got one of those spots locked down. But who who performs in an extremely high level on Saturday and maybe becomes the front runner for that other corner's position heading into the summer? Uh, is it going to be Kendall Dolby? Uh, is it going to be Gentry Williams? Uh, w- we've talked a lot about how good Josiah Wagner has looked. So that with, with Jaden Davis making the decision that, and I don't want to say that he didn't want to compete, right? I, but I don't know. It was a little surprising to me, but I I think that all of a sudden I, I thought he was going to factor into that battle or at least the rotation there at the other corner spot. Now it becomes a bit of a question mark, right? Not a lot of experience at all. Now, when you look at the guys vying for that other spot over there at corner. Yeah. Not a lot of experience. Um, we've got some good size. We've got some good athleticism. We've got some good potential, but you're right. It's um, it, it's an important spot now, and I we're in a, a a rare position to where it feels like over the past several years, corner has been a weak spot. And even though Jade Davis jumped in the portal, uh, I think that there's a chance that you know, depending on what how we settle in on the rotation, that corner is going to be a strength of this football team. I, I I actually like what we've got there right now. Could be wrong. And and maybe we'll we'll see some signs of uh, some good play or possibly you know subpar play out there on Saturday. But as of today, I'm actually feeling pretty strong about corner. Yeah. All right. What else you got your eye on? Deep ball, Ooh. and it's it's I I'm really not as I mean I'm 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 interested and I'm concerned about the personnel, but just the play in general. I I thought last year it fell really far short of what I expected it to be for us. We hit on some nice plays. We hit on some game-changing plays, uh, no doubt. But you you talked about this on the last pod, score from far, right? It's one of the things that Levy has talked about. And I think that there's obviously a lot of things outside of just throwing the deep ball that get you in a position to be able to do it. But uh, we have to have more success as a football team pushing the ball down the field. Now, that comes from running it better on early downs. That comes from uh, protection, being able to hold up. And that comes from wide receivers being able to win one-on-ones. And it comes from quarterbacks being able to deliver the football. I, I would like to see all of the groups, first team, second team, third team, whoever's in there, have more success pushing the ball down the field. I'm with you. One, one, when I put my list together, one of my things was, you know, what wide receivers are going to make the wow plays. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I, Andrell Anthony on a deep ball. Could it be Jaden Gibson on a deep ball, you know, going up and high pointing it and mossing somebody. Uh, could that be Nick Anderson? Like, I think that's, that's something we're all interested in seeing like those wow plays from these wide receiver from these wide receivers who, you know, let's be real. There's, there's just not a lot of proven production. When you look at the group, the talent, the size, like that gets you excited, but Hey man, when the lights come on and there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people in the stands, right. You know, it's going to be streamed on ESPN plus, right. And you know, everyone's going to be talking about it here in the state who makes plays, right. And, And maybe it's a Farouk, Catch and run, right? That's yeah. the the wow play. But Freeman, it, Gavin Freeman making yeah. uh, one of those plays with his legs. Yeah, but I, I think that the deep ball, it's supposed to be a huge part of this offense. Yep. We didn't get enough of it a year ago. So let, let's see if they can connect uh, on a few on Saturday. Okay. This is this is more of a personal thing, right? You know, you know my passion for offensive line play. I, I'm excited to watch Caden Green. Yeah. First college football game, you know, you know, game air quotes game in front of a big crowd. Want to see how he plays. Want to see how he responds. How does he handle the adrenaline? How does he handle the environment? He's had a really solid spring, right? He's got, he's got so many valuable reps, but when the eyes are all on you, right? When you're with that first group, 
how do you respond? I, I think it's a it's a good test for him, and it, it's a nice measuring stick of his progress, right? If you're the staff, you do not you don't get anything that's closer to a game day type experience than this spring game. So I I don't want to read too much into it because he's got he's got a ton of progress to make. He's the the summer is going to be extremely important for him. But it's just a it's just a good test to see where he's at. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you know this some guys some guys show up and play better in situations like this than they've practiced. Other guys have practiced well for whatever reason, practice format suits them. And you get into a moment like this where it's a little more, you're a little more on your own and, you know, you don't have someone in your ear the entire time and those guys fade a little bit and can't answer the call. So yeah, it's, I think it's going to be a really good look. I'm with you. He's, he's one of the guys that has, has stood out playing what typically is one of the more difficult positions for an early arrival, right? Tackle is not easy for a guy showing up when you're supposed to be in the spring semester of your senior year, going against grown men at the defensive line, defensive end position. Like it's, it's probably the position that translates the least as far as like what you're coaching and what your competition was like in high school compared to the next level. Yeah, no doubt. So I'm, I'm excited to watch Caden green. No pressure, young man. <laughs> I'm just going to be laser focused on you. All right. What, what else you got? A pass rush. Mm. And this is a, this is a really good chance because you know, one of the things this defense does is brings pressure from a lot of different areas, different angles, different players, um, you know, a lot of a lot of twist games up the middle, uh, a lot of you know bringing corners and cheetahs and safeties from depth. But in a spring game, you typically aren't going to get the full gamut of blitzes. They'll probably have a couple of blitzes up, but there's probably going to be more straight four man pass rush than you would typically see from this defense. And it's a really good opportunity to see how these guys do in one-on-ones and really both sides of the ball. But, you know, one of the things that we've really got to do a better job of moving forward is create pressure on the quarterback. And if you can do it with four, that's a huge asset for a, for a football team and for a defense. You know, I would say that from my a uh, small snapshot of what I've seen this spring. I feel like this is one of the areas where we may be the furthest behind. It would ni- it'd be nice to see some guys make up some ground and look really good in some of these pass rush situations that we're going to see. Yeah. If, if you had to pick one guy that will get a sack in the spring game, let's do it on three. One, two, three. Bothroyd. Bothroyd. <laughs> <laughs> he's been awesome, man. I, I don't, I, I know that, you know, it's not ideal when a transfer is looking like your best player along the, uh, along the defensive line, but I continue every time I see the guy out there just making plays, disrupting stuff like he, so I, I, I almost will be more surprised if he doesn't rack up a sack in the spring game than if he does. Yeah. I, I I would imagine if he doesn't have a sack, he'll have he'll have some tackles for a lot. He'll have some production out there. He's going to make some plays. He's just yeah. he, he's technically sound, always in the right place, and typically things happen for those type of guys. Yeah. Well, one of the other things I'm keeping an eye on is the running back position. Now, clearly, now. We did all of our position previews, but for the second year in the row, I counted incorrectly. So we didn't do the running back one, which classic. Once again, math is not supposed to be involved here. But when when you look at the running back position, you know, when you when you look at Javante Barnes and Marcus Major, clearly health is the most important thing. Got to get Javante Barnes back after the foot surgery. And then Marcus Major, they have been. I would say as careful as you can be 
with the running back this spring. Right. Uh, that's maybe that's the best way to put it. But, you know, with those two guys having, you know, having their issues, Gavin Sawchuk has had a tremendous opportunity to prove he can be not only a big factor, but he's had an opportunity to show, hey, I can be the guy. So yeah. I'm interested to see with that speed, with the with the strength and the weight that he's added. I'm interested to see if he rips off any big time chunk runs. And then guy I've been really impressed with in person uh, when I've seen him, Caleb Hicks looks good, man. Yeah, he does. He's a big, he's a big, good looking freshman there at the running back position. So, and he's, he's faster than I thought he was. Like one of the scrimmages I was out at, man, he, he ripped off a long touchdown run and kind of ran away from everyone in the secondary. And I just, I didn't know he had it like that. So we, we talk about all the time, like, Hey, what positions can you get on the field as a true freshman? If you can understand pass protection, running back is one of those positions. Yeah. So I don't know. I on Hicks as well. Yeah. I, I wouldn't sleep on Tawi. He, they love him. They love him. And he, he'd been running with the ones a lot. He that is, dude is a, he inflicts some pain. He is, he is a guy that you do not want to tackle really low to the ground. His legs are like this big around. It's he's got a, a tremendous knee and leg drive. They love him. So that's another guy to watch out for. Wouldn't shock me. Uh, he's one of the guys where no one's really going to be talking about him going in. But whenever we come out of this thing, uh, it wouldn't shock me if he ends up being like your leading rusher or something. I I guarantee you this discussion is taking place. The guys on the defense are going. Guys, if Tawi <laughs> is in, we must gang tackle. Have to. None of us want to be the guy that he runs over. And you and I, we both seen plenty of that out of spring practice. Where yeah, it's one on one and it is just, oh, oh, ooh. He's he's got some pop to him. I don't think he's the fastest dude in the world, but he he certainly he embraces the point of contact. Oh yeah. So we'll we'll see, but I guarantee you those defensive guys are saying, "Listen, be a lot of people in the stands. There's gonna be a lot of people watching at home. Let's uh let's make sure we get a lot of bodies to the ball when Tom yeah. he's carrying that thing. Let's communicate when he's in. Reminder to get your pads down, guys. Get your pads down. Yeah, he's he's physical now. You got anything else? Uh, the only other thing is, you know, we need the cheetah position to be a weapon for us. And I expect Justin Harrington to be there running with the ones. I expect him to be a weapon this year. You know, he still makes a handful of mistakes, but uh, the size, the speed, the athleticism, if he continues to, to come along, I think he could have an outstanding year. And this is, this will be, this will be a big moment for him as a guy that's, you know, jogging out there with the ones. Let's let's see how he responds to the moment. Does he try to do too much? Um, you know, does does he does he try and you know go beyond the scope of his position, or does he settle in, play his role, and do it fast and physical? Yeah, and I think the the last thing that we haven't mentioned, Jackson Arnold. Oh yeah, I. That's that I, I got to assume that's the number one thing the fan base is going to be watching for. And the talent is there. There's going to be a lot of pressure on him, right? And I know he's, I, I know this doesn't count against any type of record or anything like that. I get it. But when you're a five star quarterback and you come in at a place like Oklahoma, the expectations are what they are, and it's got a lot of pressure on him to perform well, right? He, he, he just does. That's just the reality of that situation when you are, you're a five-star QB. So uh, some of the things I've seen this spring, he, he's had some wow plays, man. Absolutely has had some wow plays, and I think he's going to have a couple in the spring game that are going to lead 
to, of course, some interesting conversations, <laughs> right, on Sports Talk Radio over over the summer. But I really just for him and, and how much work he's put in and how much progress he's made in the spring, I, I just I, I want him to go out there and play well, right? And it's not because I want the drama of a QB controversy or anything like that. I just want that for him, right, because he, he seems like he's gone about it entirely the right way he's put the work in i just i hope he gets to he he gets some of the reward for the work he's put in and it would get the fan base fired up like i i think that would i think that would be great for everyone involved no i totally agree and i i know he's gonna have some wild plays he's people are gonna see him showcase his arm he's gonna showcase his his legs and his athleticism He's going to do some really good things. I would expect that he also makes some mistakes. You know, he is he is young. He's an early arrival. So let's um, let's allow for a guy to go out there and you know learn. Right? It's okay to go learn. It's okay to to go learn the lesson the hard way about you know throwing it back over the middle whenever you're scrambling out to the outside or, or whatever it may be. Uh, let's allow him to make some mistakes, but enjoy, you know, the, the upside and the potential. Cause I know it's going to be on display. No doubt about it. All right, let's get to call your shot. We asked y'all what's your number one thing you're watching for in OU spring game. This first one comes from Roderick Simons. He says defensive line literally <laughs> don't care about anything else at this point. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good for Roderick. Yeah, yeah. I, there's a lot of people that feel the same way. You know, um, your your success is going to be tied to how good you are in the line of scrimmage. Uh, we talk about that all the time on this podcast. So, yeah, eyes on the defensive line for sure. Yeah, we uh, we hear you on that one, Roderick. And this last one comes from Ant Mazza seventeen seventeen, who <laughs> says the five stars. See how much the process. See how much of the process they've soaked in, right? So that's Jackson Arnold, Peyton Bowen, and I can't believe Adabare wasn't on either of our lists. But there's no doubt there's going to be there's going to be a lot of eyes on those three guys, right? When you are a five star, the expectations are what they are. So I I'm excited to see if Adabare gets out there and can produce some pressure coming off the edge and, you know, Bowen, his, his situation's just been interesting with, you know, the, the family tragedy kind of in the middle of spring ball and how that has affected his, his development and him just being available for practice. So I, I still think people are going to see him run around out there at that size and go, okay, yeah, I get it. I get it. But I, my hope is that all three of those guys, do some things that just get the fan base all kinds of riled up. Yeah. Well, it'd be nice. Um, I know that I know Jackson Arnold's going to do some things. Um, I, I bet Peyton Bowen shows really well. He's, he's a good player. He's done a lot of good things so far this spring out of Barre. Um, you know, he's, he's in the process. He's, he, it's, you know, it's a tough transition. He's, you know, just like we talked about at tackle, um, edge is kind of the same thing in reverse. You know, you're all of a sudden you're going up against a different caliber of offensive lineman than you're used to at the high school level. Um, I still think he has an incredible ceiling, uh, may not even be one for this kid. Um, going to take him a little bit of time. This is only going to be his 15th practice. So, uh, the kid is just scratching the surface, but he definitely has the talent and the ability to to make some wild plays out there himself. Yeah, there, there's no doubt about it. And I've been pr impressed with his progress between practice one and, you know, what we saw this week. Oh, yeah. So he it, it seems like he's going to be a guy that gets gets better quickly. He he looks like he's added so much weight. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's just I, such a huge frame. Yeah, I, I love seeing that. All right, birthday shout-outs. Everyone's favorite. Happy fifth birthday to Caden Lane. Happy sixth birthday to Finley Ryan Palmer. 
Happy 17th birthday to Ollie Free Fries. Fries. Ollie Fries. Sorry, Ollie. Happy 22nd birthday and happy graduation from OU to Erica Hurd. Happy 24th birthday to Zach and Ian. 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 Zach and Ian Hughes. Happy birthday, y'all. Happy 29th birthday to Denver. Multba. Happy 69th nice. Nice. birthday to Lou Sanis. Happy birthday to Brandon Parker. Happy birthday to Amanda Andrews. And happy birthday to Jonathan Calfee. Kathy Calfee? Calfee. Ooh, it could be Calfee. Dang. Calfee. Jonathan Calfee. Happy birthday. Uh, one of those was right. All right, let, there are some other big-time spring games going on this weekend, and we got some thoughts as as those as those are coming up. But first, Love's Travel Stops is now offering a nationwide $0.10 cent per gallon discount on gas and auto diesel. Just download the Love's Connect app and scan your barcode at the prompt on screen and watch that price drop $0.10 cents per gallon. Across the country, the Love's Connect app – unlocks exclusive deals and can help any traveler plan their route or meal on the highway. So before you hit the road, be sure to download the Loves Connect app to save 10 cents per gallon and experience the country's best highway hospitality at Loves Travel Stops. Loves also has you covered if you forget your phone charger or headphones with their expanded mobile to-go zone. And of course, don't forget to grab yourself some of that delicious Java Hamore. Opolis Clothing is the exclusive home for all of our Oklahoma Breakdown merchandise and is the best place to get your OU and OKC Thunder gear as well. If you want to live your life in better self-comfort, go to opolisclothing.com. That's O-P-O-L-I-S clothing.com. Use promo code TED, T-E-D, for 10% off your entire order. It's opolisclothing.com. Use promo code TED for 10% off. Buttery soft and 10% off. And hey, you hungry? Hungry out there? Well, then head to the garage for hand-smashed patties, butter-toasted buns, and ice-cold beer. The food is absolutely fantastic, and it is the perfect spot to watch any big game. Visit eatatthegarage.com to find a location near you and order online from the garage in your neighborhood. All right, National College Football Roundup, and we've got some, I mean, we've got some really interesting spring games this weekend. Let's start with this one. Alabama, 2 p.m. SEC Network. Ted, I know we are, we're used to Alabama just reloading. A lot of change in Tuscaloosa, though, yeah. right? New OC, new DC. Now, the systems are probably going to look pretty similar because I feel like Saban, it's, hey, you run Alabama's offense, you run Alabama's defense, which is Saban's defense, but I am interested to see if Tommy Reese gets to implement a little more of his stuff, right? And yep. they got an interesting QB competition, right? Bryce Young moving on. Jalen Milrow and Ty Simpson are two different styles of QBs. So I know the expectation is what it is at Alabama, right? We're, we're expecting them to look amazing. But with all that change, I am, I am interested in getting my eyes on the Crimson Tide. Yeah, it, it is fascinating. I mean, it's it's one of the first times that there's been at least some doubt about the future of Alabama, right? You know, with, with how good Georgia's done. They've won two national championships. Um, you know, and they've got some things that they've got to work on themselves. But, you know, it, it felt like the first time that Nick Saban couldn't just point and click and hire whoever he wanted to as his coordinators. You did uh, this, Jeff Levy. You did this. <laughs> uh, you know, quarterback, we've seen Milrow. Um, I haven't seen Simpson, but I, it's also the first time in a long time that they haven't had someone, at least in waiting. You know, we always knew about Hurts. Um, when he was quarterback, we heard about how great Tua was, right? And Tua eventually took over. We heard about how good Bryce Young was before he took over. I haven't really heard a whole lot about these guys, you know? So I, I don't know. It's, 
maybe that's a good thing that some of the spotlight is off Alabama to a certain degree. But yeah, there's going to be a lot of eyes focused on uh, on Bama this spring. See what they look like. Yeah, it's going to be fun. So that's uh, I think that that's got a little more intrigue than it usually does because lost some guys and I, I'm sure they're going to be a very good football team, but it does seem like there's more uncertainty and unknown surrounding that program for the first time in, you know, a long time. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. All right. I know you're fired up for this one. I know you're going to fire up the DVR, right? Yeah. We have our obligations right to OU spring game, but God bless DVR and God bless YouTube. Oh, by the way, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, go ahead and do it, right? We put all of this on and you can look at Teddy and I's unfortunate <laughs> physical appearance <laughs> as you can see the podcast. Colorado, Coach Prime, 2 p.m. on ESPN. Dude, where do we even start? with this one. I, I feel like this is the most anticipated spring game in all of college football this year. It's going to be awesome. Uh, Deion Sanders is going to be entertainment. Um, son at quarterback is a gifted player. They've got some solid players on the team, but tune in for entertainment. Do not tune in to expect to see like when you're watching Alabama and you're flipping back and forth between SEC Network and ESPN, it's going to look like a college team and a high school team is what it's going to look like. They yeah. are, don't expect Colorado to be a top tier football team at this point. No, I, I don't think that is a reasonable expectation. But when you when you look at their depth chart, dude, it is transfer after transfer after transfer, and now that this this spring portal window is open, right? Uh, through April 30th. They might I think have they're going to players in the spring game. <laughs> yeah. They're going to add, they're going to continue to add transfers. Like they've had a ton of guys enter the portal. And I guarantee you that is Deion Sanders saying, Hey, you are not good enough to play for me. I'm sorry. Go find somewhere else, which yeah. is harsh, but man, it is what it is. People, people do not realize how bad that roster was a year ago. They were for all the games I watched. Like I thought that they by a pretty war wide margin were the worst roster I saw in the power five where I was just like, Oh, it, it, it was, it was bad, bad, but you're right, man. It, it there's no doubt Colorado is going to blow this thing out. Right. In, in a big way. And I, I'm certainly interested in what happens on the field, but I'm also, I'm also wanting to watch it because there, there's going to be some hilarious entertainment things mixed in. I have no doubt Absolutely. about that. So I am, I may be more excited about that than I am about watching Shador Sanders toss it around the yard. I don't know. Yeah, it, you're right. It, I'll tell you what's crazy though, man. What were they one in 11 last year? Yeah, they were awful. So bad. What, they were a one 11 football team. And they're going to have like the who's who of recruits are going to be at that game. All right, number one recruit in the country is going to be there amongst others. There's a ton of guys that are going to be there. So I right, just that alone, I'm not suggesting that the number one recruit in the country is going to go there or that they're even going to have a, a top 25 recruiting class. I don't know. But the fact that that is occurring tells you that they're going to be better in the future with time. Like they are in on recruits that they haven't been in on maybe ever. I am I am a firm believer that if Deion Sanders stays there for an extended period of time, they're going to be competing for a Pac-12 championship. Yeah. Or Big 12 if they end up coming home. I, the problem is if they do too good in year 1, someone there's going to be an upgrade offered. Yeah, my uh, my Sirius XM radio producer, Robbie Triano, has a he's got a theory that Dion's going to crush it at Colorado and he's going to be the next head coach at Bama. <laughs> wow. Well. Shockingly, I'm not taking it off the table. I know. I know. All <laughs> right. Another 
another fun spring game, Nebraska, 1 p.m. on Big Ten Network. I think it's just going to be cool to get our first look at Matt Rule. There's the head man in Lincoln. I would expect the the physicality of that team, right? Going back and thinking about what we saw from Rule's Baylor's team, Baylor teams, I'm expecting the physicality of that entire program to ramp up. It, it's cool. They're going to be honoring Frank Solich, which is long overdue. I, I'm really just interested in what they look like schematically, offensively, and defensively. By the way, Casey Thompson's still there. Now he's banged up, but so we're not going to see him. But do you remember Jeff Sims from Georgia Tech? Yeah. Just amazing looking QB. Yep. He transferred to Nebraska. So. Yeah, I, it's it's interesting. I, I You know, Nebraska's got they've got some issues roster wise there. Um, you know, what they've got is they got a lot of size, a lot of like weight room strength, you know, they got tough kids. Um, they just have totally forgotten how to win. So I, you know, I'm not going to limit anything that rule can do at Nebraska, but he's got more headwinds in recruiting than uh the Dion does at Colorado for different reasons but you know they've got Nebraska has maybe as much or more backing right now behind that football program than they've ever had and maybe as much as anyone in the country they've got there's some Benjamins behind that program right now yeah and I'm expecting and maybe it's too lofty of an expectation but I'm expecting that thing to be sold out Oh yeah, you know, I'd, I'd be shocked if it, there wasn't. I don't know how many that place holds eighty five thousand. They got great fans, man. Great yeah. fans, but yeah, I think that's a fun one, right? I I don't expect Nebraska to really compete in the Big Ten, and really, I don't expect them to compete in the Big Ten for the next couple of years. But it will it will be fun just to see Matt Rule and the the red and white smock and just working it. I yep. can't wait. I love that guy. He'll talk to no less than 10,000 people that day. Oh. Truly nothing like watching him before a game, right? Just you, just working the entire field, talking to everyone. Yep. It's, it's amazing. Impressive. It is. Yeah. All right. We got Wisconsin, 1 p.m. on Big Ten Network. I, I feel like this is a program. Luke Fickle, who's a fantastic coach ends up making the move from Cincinnati to Wisconsin. I feel like I just haven't heard a ton about them throughout the off season, right? And their Wisconsin is always a little unassuming, but we cannot lose the lose sight of the fact that Wisconsin's going to be running a spread air ready offense. Yeah. And Phil Longo went from North Carolina and running that system. He, he is now the offense coordinator at Wisconsin. And Tanner Mordecai most likely going to be their quarterback, right? So there's a little OU flavor in that. Like, I want to see Tanner Mordecai running a spread offense in a Wisconsin jersey. It's going to look so strange watching Wisconsin operate that way. But I can't wait. I can't wait to get a glimpse of it. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm interested in it because I feel like this could either be if done right, can be great, or if done wrong, can really set Wisconsin back. Right. right, they have they have something they hang their hat on at Wisconsin, and that is offensive line and power running game. Right, and yes, it has held them back on offense to a degree. Right, but. I think if you totally abandon that, it's a huge mistake. I, great offensive linemen want to go play at Wisconsin because of the history and the tradition there. Uh, if they do this thing right and still stay true to that physicality up front in in a spread type of offense and look, I mean, because it's not hard to keep some of those concepts in there. So I'm I'm interested to see what it looks like. 
Yeah. Now Longo traditionally, I was looking at some of his North Carolina numbers the other day. He likes running the ball. Yeah. So uh, I think well, he also had a quarterback that could run it like crazy too. Yeah. I mean, that's it would have been nice if we would have brought Drake May with him. No <laughs> doubt. I I think that I I think one of the challenges for that staff is like okay how do we how do we blend the two, right? How how do we blend the tradition and what we've really excelled at in that program with modernizing the offense and making it more efficient. Right to where you can go score some more points. Like I, that's going to be challenging, but that's why I'm excited to watch. I want to see, you know, it'll be vanilla. I understand that, but I just want to g- sit down and watch Wisconsin be in five wide and throw like a bubble screen. You know? <laughs> yes. Yes. No, be- that's, that's right. I, when I think of Wisconsin, and what I wish they were in college football, I think of Greg Roman's offense. Yeah, that's a great way of looking at it. I like you know, that. Because it's you, you got to have, have the right QB to run that. You do, you do, and that, that's the, you know that's been a big problem for him. You know, a lot of things get get fixed if you have the right quarterback, and and maybe they'll find him. Yeah. All right, we got some Big Twelve spring games. Are you interested in any of these? We got West Virginia at noon on ESPN Plus, Texas Tech noon on espn plus baylor noon on espn plus i wonder if they all got together and say hey guys let's go noon but also iowa state but i don't think iowa state is televised because classic iowa state any interest in any of those big 12 spring games yeah i well i mean i've got interest in all of them I, i i wonder how neil brown bounces back um you know i coaching for his job I thought I thought it was done last year. You know, I guess beating Oklahoma uh, helps you out. We'll see what he can do. Texas Tech, I think, is interesting. They're in a what I think may be a difficult spot for them, where they're coming into this season with some expectations. You know, and you know, I I think um, I think that McGuire's done a good job there through year one and. They've got some good energy behind the program, and he does a great job at, at recruiting and finding the uh, you know the hidden gems out there throughout Texas high school football. But they had like ten senior starters on that defense from a year ago. They so had a old. guy that's that's going to be a, a at a minimum a, a top ten pick, maybe a top five or higher. Who knows? They're losing a bunch off of that team, and I'm just not sure how they bounce back. Yeah, uh, and I think you know, the thing I'm most interested in is that quarterback competition. But they got an old, old guy, and then a guy in Baron Morton that you know has a lot of high expectations, right? With how how highly he was recruited, but I don't know—is it going to be the Tyler Shuck show? Yeah. Who knows? But yeah, there, there's definitely, there's definitely some hype around Texas Tech. I, I get the sense that you remember how people were talking about Kansas State before yeah. last season. Everyone, everyone's dark horse was Kansas State. Everyone said no one's talking about Kansas State, even though everyone was saying <laughs> no one's talking about Kansas State. Texas Tech, with with the successful year one under Joe McGuire, it kind of feels, it feels like momentum is building towards some people thinking tech could be the dark horse heading into this season. Yeah. I I wouldn't, I, I'm not going to take that away from them. I just, I'll be watching it curiously, especially yeah. on defense. Yeah. I We'll see. I, I am a little interested in Baylor. Blake Shapen. Quiet. Very quiet. So quiet. Which Dave Aranda, let's not not the uh not the loudest of guys. <laughs> right? But I mean, this has been a and I know they were had a disappointing season a year ago, but it's been a it's been a successful program, right? That's been through a lot, don't get me wrong, but it's been awfully quiet, right? And I, I want to see what Blake Shapin looks like. I thought he I thought he underperformed a season ago. It was too up and down. He had some moments where you're like, that guy is amazing. And then he, he had some moments where you're like, this guy, did he just, is this the first time he's played quarterback? Right. So that, and you put, you know, Richard Reese was awesome at running back for him as a freshman last year. 
I'm interested to see just how he looks physically, but yeah, very quiet on the Baylor front. Yeah. And you know, I, I don't know what to make of it because you know, I don't think we maybe we talked about it on here because I had heard that maybe Aranda was sniffing around at the Wisconsin job, which, you know, that makes sense for for multiple reasons. But is there something there that he senses? Because they had they he took over a pretty good roster, right? They had some yeah. really good players on there. And McGuire was really I mean, there's obviously they've got a good coaching staff that recruits well, but McGuire was was kind of the 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 real key behind the scenes in recruiting and being in with with everyone in in Texas high school. So has McGuire kind of stolen that thunder and taken it to Texas Tech? And they've graduated a lot of those guys that that really built that program up to w- what gave Aranda the quick success. I don't know. Just I'm just kind of curious there about what's going to happen. Yeah, when you look at when you look at Baylor's situation, just from a recruiting standpoint, right now every big program across the country is coming to the state of Texas trying to take the most talented players out of that state, right? Your Bama's, your Georgia's, your Ohio State's, and then you've got the big time programs that are close, right? OU, Texas, Texas A&M. So you're already having to deal with all you're battling all of those big time brands for the talent in your state and your, your niche when, when Joey McGuire and Matt rule were there was like, Hey, we identify guys with the, with the measurables that may not have the production that we think we can develop. We develop those guys. They become really, really good players and become draft picks, right? That was the formula, right? Well, now you got Joey McGuire identifying all of those guys, and he's got better relationships than anyone on your staff has with all the coaches in the state, right? When it comes to, hey, the the under the radar, like the below the radar guys. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah, I, I don't know, like being Dave Aranda right now and being trying to recruit guys that all these other schools are recruiting, and now Joey McGuire is identifying those guys. that. It can't be easy. You've had to start recruiting against yourself, essentially, you know, like for the tier of guys that that used to be your thing. Now there's more competition in that market also. So, yeah, it's I don't know. It's diff, it's difficult. It's something to watch for sure. Yeah. All right. Let's finish up with our winners and losers of the week. But first. Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School represents a tradition of educational excellence in Oklahoma City. Grounded in a faith-based education, students prepare to meet their potential with an individualized academic path that strives for success. Bishop McGinnis offers a college prep curriculum that includes 22 AP courses, participation in OSS AA Athletics, where they've won over 100 state championships, and numerous clubs and organizations for students to join and grow. If you want to provide the best possible educational and spiritual development for your children, contact Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School or visit bmchs.org. Financial aid is available. And attention business owners, you need Insurica in your life. Insurica is one of the country's largest insurance brokers with 30 offices throughout Oklahoma, Texas, and the Southwest. Insurica is able to customize programs by accessing the latest information from many insurance carriers. They compare and contrast coverage offerings and pricing in order on a cost-effective, comprehensive program to meet your business's specific needs. Insurica's clients become best-in-class businesses by working with Insurica's team of advisors to manage risk. Purchasing insurance is only one way to protect your business. Best-in-class businesses win by avoiding a loss in the first place. If your business partners with Insurica, you'll save huge amounts of money and take back control of your total cost of risk. I'm an Insurica client, and you should be too. If your business wants to be best in class, connect with Insurica at Insurica.com. That's I-N-S-U-R-I-C-A dot com. As always, Ted, kick us off. Who do you have as your winner of the week? Well, I guess it's easy to go with the highest paid player in the history of the NFL, Jalen Hurts, right? $255 million five-year contract extension. 
uh, includes nearly $180 million in guaranteed, $51 million average annual value, largest in league history. Mm. So makes more than Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray, Deshaun Watson, Patrick Mahomes, everyone. Big money. And then they announced the day after that, uh, just a little ankle surgery here. No big deal. Just to clean up. <laughs> just, clean, just cleaning it up. I, you, you and I talked a lot about Jalen Hurts. Obviously, when we were doing, when we were doing the radio broadcast, when he was playing, it, I never saw this coming. I thought he would be a, you know, bottom half of the league type starter or, you know, top of the league type backup. With the, with the right fit, goes to the right place, could find some success. Yeah. I, I think anyone, you know, really other than Jalen Hurts, because the guy's put the work in. He's believed in himself. He's put the work in. But, man, uh, I mean, how, how impressive of a start to his career. And I think there's a lot of credit you got to give to a lot of different people. And the credit starts with Jalen Hurts, right? The improvement has been just really, really impressive, especially when it comes to the passing game. Eagles deserve a ton of credit too, Ted. Uh, obviously, you know, when they took him in the second round, they had Carson Wentz signed to a long-term deal, big money. But they yep. saw something in him and, and believed in him. So I think, you know, those those are the two people, you know, the two entities that deserve the most credit is Hertz and then uh, the brass there in Philadelphia. Yeah, and you know, I don't because I've I've tossed it around a little bit. Is is this premature? Are are they are they doing too much with maybe a a couple year flash here with with what we've seen from from Jalen Hurts, but. I just I don't think that's the case. As hard of a worker he is, I know he's had some ankle issues, but he's a big, strong, super strong, physical, durable guy. Um, you know, he'll have to, you know, become smarter and smarter taking care of himself whenever he gets outside of the pocket. You know, I think he's developed his, you know, his his Passing game is ahead of what I thought it would be. You know, he's continued to work on accuracy and timing and, you know, the RPOs getting into the NFL, I think has helped him tremendously. And until teams develop a better way of stopping some of those, I think he's going to continue to have a lot of success. Yeah. And I, I always say this when people ask me about him, I think if he wasn't playing quarterback in the NFL, he's one of those guys that I think would still be in the NFL at a skilled position. I really do. Yeah. But with his size, the power, like the strength, the speed, like I think he could be, you know, a second or third running back and a special teams ace. Right. Yeah. Like I, if, but to his credit, he's an NFL caliber athlete that has turned himself into a damn good quarterback. And that is, you just don't see that every day. There, I, I do think, and not to go too deep on this, right? I, it's awesome that he's the highest paid player in the league. It's great for OU, right? They can put it on the graphic. In fact, they did it. They put gold bars on the graphic, which was, which was pretty funny. But I, I do think Lamar Jackson, and I don't know how this affects Lamar's contract situation with the Ravens, they got to be looking at this going, Oh gosh. Oh, man. <laughs> right. I, I do think Lamar and the success he had in Baltimore, right. And how they built that offense around him. And, you know, he had that MVP year. I, I think that did in a way kind of set the table for the Eagles looking at it and going, okay, we can like, we can build an offense around this guy. Yep. And to their credit, it's been been wildly successful. But yep. one guy, and I know OU fans aren't going to love it, but one guy that deserves a lot of credit is Lincoln Riley. Yeah. And you and I talked about it a lot during that 2019 season. 
Lincoln changed his offense pretty substantially to fit Jalen Hurts' skill set. And they worked a way more QB run game into the offense, even way more than the year before with Kyler. And they really played to his strengths. And Lincoln deserves credit for that. He does. And they ended up in a college football playoff as a result of it. And I think showcasing Hertz's talents that season also probably had the Eagles looking at it going, hey, they did a lot of things where they built this offense at Oklahoma around him. He improved as a passer. You know, he's got the right mental makeup, the competitiveness, all that stuff. But, you know, maybe we can do that too, and it can work. So I, you know, I know we, a lot of OU fans don't want to give Lincoln Riley any credit anymore, but what he did with him and how that positioned Jalen Hurts for his NFL career, he, he deserves credit. Yeah. Well, you know, the other thing is, and I don't know him, so I could be wrong on this. But there's a lot of guys in every sport that whenever they hit the contract like this, it totally changes their work ethic. It changes how much they put into the game. They feel like they've arrived. They feel like they've, uh, like everything's already been accomplished. I'm just along for the ride at this point. I don't get that feeling with him. He seems to be. I, a robot, a robot. Yeah. Dad was a coach. You know, he was like the perfect player for Nick Saban. Right. And you feel like that's just going to be what he continues to do. Yeah. And one last thing, congrats to Nicole Lynn, uh, his agent, uh, Nicole. I've known Nicole for a long time. She's an OU grad. She's also married to Gabe Lynn, former, uh, former Oklahoma defensive back. We were in the same recruiting class. So, Congratulations to Gabe Lynn, too. <laughs> yeah, who? which Gabe Lynn, guess where he's at? Where? It's on the Colorado staff. So really? the Lins, the okay. Lins are just balling right now, man. Look at them go. That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty great. All right, who do you have as your loser of the week? <sighs> okay, um, I went with ESPN FPI. Mm. You know, this is probably something that's very stupid to get annoyed with. But I just, I don't understand. It's a, it's a outright lie. It is a blatant lie that this so-called formula that they ran 20,000 simulations on has Texas as the number five team. It is, it's a lie. They're lying to us. They say it's based off of recent success. You look at the top 10, Ohio State, Bama, Georgia, LSU, Michigan, USC, Clemson, Notre Dame. Aside from USC, um, who's recent to the show, these are top 10 perennial football teams. They're in the top 10 almost every single year in some like varying order, except Texas. Texas has been there, I think, once. They were nine as a four-loss team when they went to the Sugar Bowl. That's it. This is, is there. I cannot be convinced that they didn't just place Texas at number five. It, this is, and and I'm with you, and I spent a full, a full segment on my radio show talking about this. So, I, I have come strapped for this conversation. <laughs> Good. The, the thing that bothers me the most, Texas is at five. There's got to be, and I don't know how their formula, algorithm, whatever the hell you want to call it works. There's got to be a substantial recruiting component into it, right? And there's just no doubt that Texas has accumulated a, a lot of talent over the last several years, right? That's got to be part of that formula. That's the only way that it makes sense that they're in there at number five because they've gone five and seven and eight and five in the last two seasons, right? So I don't want to hear the recent success argument. They've got one double-digit win season in the last 13 years. One 
and it's that sugar bowl year you're talking about. Mm -hmm. This is the part that pisses me off. In their formula, they, they spit out your percentage chance of winning your conference. And they give Texas a 54.4% chance to win the Big 12. Texas has not won the Big 12 since 2009. How, it, how the hell can they have more of a, than a 50% chance to win the Big 12? They haven't done it since I was redshirting in college. And I'm old as hell now, Ted. I'm getting creaky. It makes, like, it, it makes no sense. It makes no They've sense. They've won it three times in the entire history of the conference, which started playing in 1996. So what is that, like 27 years, something like that? 26, 27 years, they've won it three times. OU's one of 14, by the way, if anyone's wondering. Right. I One of the other things, just because I took a long look at just where all the Big 12 teams are ranking, this, this one bothered me almost more than Texas. I think you and I agree that Chris Kleiman's doing an awesome job at Kansas State. Mm -hmm. Coming off a Big 12 championship, right? They've got Kansas State with a 2.9% chance to win the Big 12 conference. And I know they lost Deuce Vaughn and Malik Knowles and Felix and UDK Uzama. Like, they lost talent. There's no doubt about it. But I believe in Chris Kleiman. I believe in the culture of that program. They've got six teams in the big 12 ahead of the team that just won the title. And one of those is UCF. Yeah. Well, where was it? Wasn't Texas tech like number 23 or 24 on the list? 22, the 22 Texas so is five. OU's 11 TCU 17 tech is 22 Baylor 23 UCF 26 Kansas state 27. So if it's going off of, Recent success. What was what, how many games did Tech win last year? Seven. Seven and five. Were they seven and five, or were they eight and five? They win their bowl game. They won their I'll bowl game. I'll give them eight and five. I, is that recent success? I, because outside of eight and five, they've been terrible. They don't recruit well. Like nothing in any of those metrics has Texas Tech done anything remotely well at all. It's just I don't know, man. I in the, I really don't care about ESPN's FBI. What makes me mad is I know they're lying. There is there is no chance in hell that that formula spit out Texas as the number five team. There is no way, and unless they they said they ran the simulation 20,000 times unless they ran it 20,000 times and picked the one time that it had Texas at number five that's the only way I I'm with you but damn it they've succeeded we're talking about it <laughs> right last thing that really bothered me checking in dead last of the rankings when you look at all the big 12 teams Kansas you you got to understand the momentum, FBI. Come on. The Jayhawks are on the come up. What are we doing? Be believe in the fighting Lance Leipold's stupid uh, formula. Many would suggest, and I perhaps could possibly even agree, that they have the best quarterback in the conference. I, I've had to do that ranking on my radio show multiple times already. Jalen Daniels has checked in at number one for me every single time. It's meaningful. Jalen Daniels, Dylan Gabriel, and Quinn Ewers are usually in the uh, the top three conversation. But I've gone with Daniels every time. I think he's the most – he's just the most entertaining quarterback in the conference, and which is fun. I you like have it. to also look at it as all things equal, right? Yeah. All things yeah. equal, he's the best quarterback in the Big 12 because all things are not equal with him being at Kansas. No. All right, let's get to my winner and loser. But – First, John Vance Auto Group has been serving Oklahomans for 40 years, family owned and operated. They got nine full service dealerships in Woodward, Miami and Guthrie. 
No matter what your vehicle needs are, John Vance Auto Group has you covered. They carry domestic brands such as Ford, Lincoln, Chevy, Buick, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Ram, Jeep, and Wagoneer. John Vance Auto Group's goal is to give unequaled service and to exceed customers' expectations in every way, which is why they have their lifetime loyalty program. And here's how it works. You buy a new or used car. All you have to do is get all of the manufacturer recommended maintenance done at the Vance dealership. And if something goes wrong with the components of your engine, transmission, drive, axle, or transfer unit, they will cover the repair costs. It's a great deal. You can browse their entire inventory or find the John Vance dealership near you at Vance Auto Group. Dot com. And First Fidelity Bank is a full-service financial institution based in Oklahoma, tailored solutions for all your personal and business needs, checking accounts, saving accounts, home loans, and much more. They do it all, whether it's online banking from your computer or mobile banking from your phone. Everything is stress-free with FFB. Making mobile deposits, paying bills online, and moving money to different accounts could not be easier. They also do a great job if you need to ACH a very large amount of money for your taxes. <laughs> oh, it hurt, Ted. It yep. hurt. Yep. People, make your life easier and go bank with First Fidelity Bank. Visit FFB.com for more information. All right, for my winner of the week, I thought about going with the Sacramento Kings again. Took a 2-0 lead on the Warriors. Big time production from all kinds of guys in, in that game. And Sabonis wasn't at his best, but he was good. Fox continues to be awesome. Malik Monk is just balling. Harrison Barnes, Herter, making things happen. I mean, they just got a bunch of guys that are playing really good team basketball. That crowd remains electric. Here's to hoping that Sabonis' sternum is good to go <laughs> for game three. But, hey, Draymond Green, he stomps on him, right? He did grab his leg. I, for whatever reason, I thought the stomp was hilarious. Like, as they replayed it over and over again, I just kept laughing harder and harder. I was like, who, who does that? I mean, who does that? But Jeremiah Green suspended for game three. Uh, That's noteworthy. That's yes. It. He he has been suspended for a playoff game before, and it was rather substantial. It cost them a title and cost us Kevin Durant. <laughs> yeah, I that was a that was a wild sequence. Um, you know, it's so weird to like to see the video of that and then go in the comments. And see people say that Sabonis deserved it <laughs> for grabbing onto his leg. He like falls down and just kind of like, it's not like he went and sought out Draymond's leg. It's like he just kind of happened to like almost get his arms tangled around his foot as he fell to the ground. It's so weird how people could see. Everyone sees the same thing, but there is such a wide range of interpretations of the event. It's just, it's so weird. Humanity yeah. is lost. <laughs> the, the the NBA interpreted it as uh, Draymond doing something dumb again. Uh, you're suspended. Yeah. That's how they interpreted it. I, I did think that it, I don't think I've ever had anyone stomp on my chest like that. Maybe I should try it, but Sabonis, he definitely sold it. <laughs> oh my God. There's no way it hurt to this. It's like WWE he... wrestling. You know, when they like do the slaps and they're like, oh, yeah. it that's what it seemed like. It, it's it's like, you know, uh, good job. You know, yeah. he sold it. Got him and, suspended. I mean, I, I would say what Draymond did after getting tossed was more egregious than the actual stomp. Speaking of WWE wrestling, like he went full heel on that crowd. What was that? And I think Adam Silver was there. So that couldn't have helped Draymond Green's case to not be suspended, right? You do that oh, and man. then you basically turn into a heel and you're like working the crowd. <laughs> it was only Draymond Green, man. Uh, yeah. Oh good, my hey, gosh. Good job. At least I didn't see this. Uh, credit to Sacramento's crowd for that is. That's typically about where you see a beer come from the uh, the you know the tenth or or twelfth row. So credit to those folks for not doing that. Yeah, restraint from the Sacramento faithful. All right, but my winner of the week, I'm going Bryce Young. I mean, seems like starting to feel like he's going number one overall to Carolina. The betting odds have swung significantly in his favor. He's going number one in the majority of mock drafts and. 
I think it has a lot to do, right? Reported that he has canceled his remaining pre-draft visits to other teams. And now he's already visited Houston and Carolina. So I think that whole thing's being blown out of proportion, maybe made into something that it it isn't. But the general consensus was that C.J. Stroud kind of fit the mold of the types of quarterbacks that Frank Reich has liked in the past. But clearly, Bryce Young and his people feeling good about things. It it, it feels like he's going to be the top pick. Yeah. And I don't know. I guess Carolina is of some of the places that may take quarterback early. Maybe is the, the place that you would want to go. I, you ever been know. to Charlotte? No. I've heard awesome things. I've never been. Yeah. I just, I'm not sold on Bryce Young. In really? The NFL. I think he's an incredible quarterback. I think he's a great college quarterback. I'm just, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sold. I could be wrong. Could be wrong on him, but. He's, I mean, he's a worthy top pick, okay? I've seen worse quarterbacks go at number one overall. Um, I just, I, we just talked about Jalen Hurts, so maybe my evaluation is not great. You, but, you, were, you were spot on on Zach Wilson, though. Yeah. I, I don't know. But I don't we'll think see. that's a fair comparison. He I, just, he seems, he seems very frail to me and I know they protect the quarterbacks like crazy in the NFL so maybe that doesn't matter I just I don't know he he is going to have to he's going to have to offset that with his mental game yeah which it it sounds like and similar to Tom Brady right now obviously Tom Brady's a big dude but when you talk about using your knowledge of the defense and of the, your offensive concepts to protect yourself by getting rid of the football. That's something that's going to be important for him. And just from everything I've been able to gather, talk to some people that, you know, around that program, like he's, he's like that football IQ type of guy. So that's how you protect it when you're not the biggest dude in the world. But I, I did think it was interesting because Scott Fitter, the new GM for the Panthers had a press conference and You know, they asked him about Bryce Young canceling the rest of his visits. And he was like, we haven't told him he's going to be the number one pick. You'd have to ask him and his people about that. Uh, (laughs) We don't know why they did it. So I thought that, yeah, I love, I love a good smoke screen when the draft (laughs) is only a, a, only a week away. Yeah. Well, I, you know, they could, they could go ahead and say, yeah, we're taking him number one, if that's what they've made their decision on, but. You know, maybe they're not absolutely sold if, you know, they're still entertaining maybe offers for that that number one overall spot. I don't know. We'll see. I hope Carolina's got a good offensive line. Yeah. Uh, got to invest. I'm sure, they, I'm sure they're thinking that as well. All right, for my loser of the week, thought about going with Trey Young and the Atlanta Hawks. That squad just, they, they do not have a chance against the Celtics, especially if Derek white is going to play the way that he's playing, I mean, Tatum and Brown are enough, man, but Derek white has been, I mean, fantastic. And the Celtics look like a dangerous, dangerous team right now. It just doesn't look like it's going to happen for our man, Trey young and the Hawks. And the worst thing about it is you think about that conference finals. They made a couple of years ago. They sent a lot out on the Jante Murray trade. Just doesn't, doesn't feel great in Atlanta right now. I know Quint Snyder just got there, but uh, I like uh, him. Maybe he can pull that thing together, but it's it's felt pretty fractured for a while there. Yeah, yeah. No, that's I. I do wonder what's next for Trey Young's career. I he's got to start shooting the three better. Hadn't shot it well. Yeah. So we'll we'll see. But I also thought about going with the charge. A lot of charge discourse these last couple of days. And I and I get it, right? You don't want to see guys like John Morant and Giannis get hurt on plays like that, right? Where guys slide in. Now they didn't people are saying they got undercut. That ain't an undercut. But when you slide in, you take charges, it, it has become a a rather popular point of discussion. The charge is under attack, Ted. 
it's I, I don't know what you think about it, but if you don't want to get hurt, don't go careening towards the basket out of control when the seven footer is standing there outside the circle. Yeah. I, Sports come with risk, man. You can't remove all the risk. Yeah. I do think the easiest thing to do, and I've heard a lot of people throw out different ideas. I do think the NBA at some point, they're going to extend the restricted area. I don't know how far, but with how far guys can take off from now, I, I think they're going to want to protect guys a little more. I just, you, I, you well, can't eliminate it, right? You no. It's already hard enough to play defense in the NBA, right? right? It's, it's, it's really difficult. If you now, take away thing, the charge, man, it's ugh. I've always said this. If you can take off, go over or through a guy and complete the dunk, it should not be a charge. I if if you can if you can finish it and complete the dunk, to me, that airspace was yours. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Just like, hey, if, if you're that dude, then it ain't a charge. Right. Let's let's bring back posters in kids' bedrooms. Come the on. The rule is different for everyone, right? Some guys can uh could could like Morant, he can complete the dunk. Others, not so much. You better think yeah. twice. You're not gonna get the call. Yeah. No, that's interesting. That would be fun. That'd be really fun. It would never happen, but it's gonna be fun. <laughs> right. But my loser of the week. Ted is Scott Foster lost his fastball. Dang. The streak is over. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Scott Foster is an NBA official, the most famous NBA official, by the way. Like he, when he is refing a playoff game, it becomes a trending topic. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> but heading into game two of Suns Clippers on Tuesday night, Chris Paul, teams that he was on were 0 in 13. And playoff right. games officiated by Scott Foster. I mean, just an unbelievable stat. It has very much become a thing. Well, the Suns win game two. Even that series one to one. Now, there was a portion of that second quarter where the Clippers had me thinking, are they, are they going to go into Phoenix and win both of these without Paul George? But Booker and Durant ultimately were just, they were too good. Devin Booker's awesome. He, he's he awesome. And I, yep. I don't know about you. I find him to be one of the more likable guys in the league. I don't, I don't care about his dating life or any of that. So, so like, I don't even pay attention to any of that, but I just like watching the dude play basketball. He had 38 and nine in this one. Kevin Durant looks good, made a good decision, cut the hair real low. I'm convinced he's going to Chris Paul's barber. He looks <laughs> good. He looks clean. Jumper looks good. Like it looks like he's getting back into a rhythm. I, I really like watching the Suns play basketball. It, it's yep. fun, but also Kawhi Leonard. I mean, that dude. And he's been he's been for a couple months now. Like he's amazing. Yeah, like, he might be the best player in the league. Thirty-one, eight, and seven. Like, looks strong as hell. Like, like, he looks quietly right. He he was the guy that he had all of the attention for, uh, like what's it, two years or so, and then injuries. Yeah, load baby. management. But he has he's been awesome, awesome. So, I there's. There's a large part of me that wants Paul George to make a miraculous comeback off that knee injury and somehow play the last couple games of this series. That would be exhilarating, but I I, I think it's going to be a great series regardless. This seems like it's going to be a really fun one. Did you see? I felt uh felt a little sad. Felt like the end is quickly approaching when Russell Westbrook drove down the lane and couldn't elevate to finish that dunk. Did you see that? I did. I did. Westbrook's been, I mean, the first game, yeah, the shooting numbers were not good, but he had a massive impact on that game, especially late, like made the winning plays that resulted in the Clippers stealing that first game. What do you have, like 28? Yeah, in game that two? Final, the final uh, play bouncing off Booker 
was nice. It's it a block. Yeah. He, oh yeah, that was, I heard, I heard Zach Lowe. I, he said that was Russell Westbrook's best defensive player of his career. And I was trying to go through what I was thinking. I was like, yeah, that was <laughs> pretty damn moment, impressive. I guess maybe, but I do think that his energy, like his effort, his energy, that's how I'm always going to remember him. Yeah. I, it, like I just, he, when I saw that play, I'm like, I'm so used to that's him. He would tear the rim off the backboard on that, like that play so many times. And I saw it and maybe he just like got his, didn't get a good take off or whatever, but I was just like, Oh, okay. He's, he's starting to lose that, that also. We, we need more content of Russell Westbrook yelling at fans in close proximity where was that do they like walk through the foyer before they go to the locker room so i've heard i've heard a couple nba podcasts talk about it they i guess there's a long way and then there's a short way there and like the short way is where the players the visiting players use during covid because there was no fans and it's like you walk right out on the court and the long way i guess is a long way so he was taking the shortcut and there's fans like in a suite in there and sounds like he called him West Brick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that, that Phoenix good. fan, I'll give him credit though. He wasn't scared. He didn't seem scared. Yeah. You gotta be careful now. I I get it if you're if you're Westbrook there, but you never know whenever you pick the wrong guy. <laughs> yeah. That guy, I'll tell you right now, that guy, he he did he did not look like he was going to shy away. And I don't know if that was his kid sitting next to him or what, but he did have to play the nachos. And he was like... <laughs> the the kid looked suspiciously comfortable with that grown up <laughs> yelling at Westbrook. Like, oh yeah, this happens a lot. Like we're <laughs> like he didn't even act like it was that strange. He didn't even bother to stop eating whatever the hell he was eating. I know it took him a minute to even turn around. That was yeah, great. It was just like, oh, here we go again, Dad. <laughs> Dad's yelling at someone again. No, but That's good. fun series. A lot, yeah. a lot of fun parts about that series. Spring game, baby, should be fun. Hopefully, I make it. You'll be there, and if you're not, early congratulations. Thank you, Ted. On that note, episode three hundred and ten in the books. We'll have a new podcast that'll drop Sunday. Just a reminder, you can hear Teddy from 3 to 6 on 94.7 The Ref. You can hear me from 2 to 5 on SiriusXM Big 12 Radio, Channel 375. Hope you all have a great week. And until next time, we appreciate y'all for listening. Do what you always do, Oklahoma. Take care of each other.